G'day everyone, let's just look at the output signal on my um, Stratocaster on the oscilloscope and a couple of interesting things came up so I'll just show you those, we'll, we'll have a look at the oscilloscope. So I've just got the guitar plugged in directly, um, it's not being loaded down by any other circuitry or anything, the um, oscilloscope probe's just um, connected directly to the end of the guitar cable. So let's just have a look at the organic um, signal that comes out of the guitar just as you're playing. The most amplitude that you're going to get from the um, guitar is going to be open strings and when you obviously smack them hard. Uh, as you would notice when you play the guitar, when you do um, open it sounds a lot louder and it is a lot louder. We're going to see that on the oscilloscope now. So if I just, if I just um, strum all the strings uh, in open, You can see that sort of hit 700 millivolts. Um, that was the one of the peaks hit 100, uh, 700 millivolts. That was the highest um, uh, recording. 832, one volt actually hit that. Um, had a spike that hit one volt. So you can see that it's actually um, it's got a it's actually got a lot more output than I was expecting. Um, uh, with um, I, I'm pretty sure the, the, hum, the humbuckers have a uh, higher output. Um, I might actually, I'll just get the, let's, it, that's actually might be interesting to see. I'll just go and get um, my, um, I'll, I'll go and get my uh, PF150, which is the um, Ibanez, uh, J the Japanese Ibanez from the, from the 70s, um, that, the, the Les Paul copy. Now, I know through the amplifier, this guitar sounds much louder um, than any of my other guitars, um, so it'll be interesting to see what comes up on the screen. Oh, look at that. We're nearly, actually, I'm going to have to change the, um, the volts per division because it's actually going off the screen. Yeah, nearly two volts. Wow. Completely out of tune. Sorry about that, but um, it's just for a um, demonstration. So, that, so that's nearly, nearly double the output of the, um, of the Stratocaster. I'll just show you what both those guitars were on the camera so you know what I'm actually playing here. The one on the left is the Strat, the Squire. It's actually a cheap, uh, cheapo, $150 Squire. And the one on the right is the um, Ibanez uh, Les Paul copy, um, which was yeah hitting sort of nearly two volts, and the one on the left was hitting about one volt. So now I'm going to play um, the Stratocast. I'm just going to hit a few um, of the of the strings open on their own, and we'll see the um, what comes up on the screen. And um, uh, I, I found this quite interesting actually. So if you're new to um, oscilloscopes. Um, most people sort of have a general idea of what they do, but I'll just quickly explain that um, uh, uh, look going up you've got uh, the voltage and going across you've got the time and you have the time these divisions set to particular um, values to capture the waveform nice and clearly on the screen. So at the moment I've got 500 volts per division and going across I've got 10, 10 uh, oh, sorry, um, uh, 5 milliseconds per division. So I've got a open E captured on the screen. This is the low E, and um, you may know that um, that the that the E string resonates at a frequency of uh, just over 80, uh, 80 hertz. Um, and it's I'm actually quite surprised to see this um, uh, how how clear the structure of the waveform actually is when you just hit the open E. I mean, it's you know like it's got some pretty pretty um, repetitive uh, structure in the waveform. Um, so that's an open E and, that, and that's resonating at just over 80 hertz as I said. But if we hit the low E um, on, uh, sorry, the high E, it, that actually resonates at uh, around 330 hertz. So we should see a similar sort of structure, but these um, peaks will be closer together because it resonates faster. And there you go. Straight away, you can see it's a lot more bunched up with the with the with the high E than it is with the low E. Just hit the low E again. So there's the low E. See, it's more spread out. Now, if I actually hit both at the same time, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, I might need to zoom in. I'll just try it first. You can actually see the combination of the two. You've got the you've got the high E with the um, uh, with the high frequency. Looks like I actually hit the high E before I hit the low E there for, you know, like a, a, a split sort of second. 
um, and then you've got the, that's the that's the low E, and then you've got the high E, and then you've got the low E again. Then you got and you can actually see if we zoom in a bit. Too, that's too much. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see, but you can actually see the 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 high E is superimposed on the low E there. So this is all just sort of you know uh, uh, pretty pretty not basic information, but it's pretty obvious sort of stuff. But I just still found that pretty interesting to see how the oscilloscope can actually capture the um, signal so clearly. But I also noticed something else that was pretty interesting too. When we actually look at the frequency response of these strings and when you hit a harmonic on the, um, on the strings as well, what actually comes up in the FFT view of the oscilloscope. So let's have a look at that. So we've got a open E on the, on the FFT view. And the FFT view basically just shows you the, the frequency content of the signal. So you can, you can sort of analyze it on a frequency, on a frequency level. And the first peak that you've got is at 82 approximate hertz, which is exactly, almost exactly what an open E is. An open E is at 82.9 hertz. And then if we follow the, um, if we move the cursor, continue down, it's actually got another sort of overtone or harmonic um, on 122 hertz. And then the next one is on uh, pretty much double what the first one is, 167 hertz. So you can see that, uh, and it just continues on like that. It, it's it's all it's pretty much like clockwork. You add another half, and then you add another whole. And my understanding of this is basically a guitar doesn't output when you hit an open E. It's supposed to resonate at 82.9 hertz or whatever. A guitar doesn't output exactly 82. Point nine hertz in and that's all a completely clean 82.9 hertz that sort of a signal would be very boring it would be basically like the output that you get from a signal generator it sounds more like a computer sort of tone than a um than a musical instrument so um all this other stuff makes up the characteristics of the sound and you know like when you hit an open when you hit an open e the string will resonate and the res and the resonance will go through the, the whole guitar, the neck, the hardware that you've got, you know, the bridge, the body of the guitar. There's a lot of things that actually make up what a guitar sounds like, the characteristics of a guitar. And um, that's why one guitar sounds different from the other, because if they all just output at 82.9 hertz, it would make a very boring tone from your guitar. So that's where all this other stuff comes into, um, comes into play. Now, if we hit a harmonic on the E string, a harmonic is basically like halving the length of your string to half the size. Um, it, it will, it, this view should look quite different and I'll just get it up on the screen because it's going to be easier to explain from a picture than for me to, than for me to verbally explain it anyway. So there's the harmonic and you can see we've, we've lost a lot of content in there, um, some of this lower stuff, but, but the first peak isn't, is no longer on 80 hertz, it's on 163. So that first 80 hertz um, peak that we got when we did the open, the open E is now gone, and it's uh, the first peak. Well, it's it, you can see there's kind of a bit of a mound there, but the first real peak is at 160 at double the frequency. And like I said before, when you hit the when you hit a harmonic on your guitar. It's effectively like halving the string length. So if you halve the string length, the frequency will go up, and it, it's exactly what it's done. You can see that the um, that the first the first clear frequency um, that that appears on the on the FFT is actually at 160, 164, which is double the um, double the frequency of an open E. So one thing I forgot to mention with the um, view of the high E and the low E was that the low E actually has a much higher amplitude. You can see here that it's actually um, 370 millivolts peak to peak, whereas the high E, 164, it kind of settles on about 164 millivolts, so it's about half the amplitude. And you may notice with certain effects that they react differently to your low E than they do to your high E. For, for instance, a perfect example is, the, is a compressor. The high E doesn't sound very compressed at all, whereas the, the low E with certain compressors, the low E will sound a lot more compressed. Um, so that's one way that um, the amplitude from each string of your guitar can react differently to certain effects. So anyway, that's a basic view of the um, output of a guitar signal. 
I uh, hope you got something out of it. I, I personally got a lot out of it, actually. I've never seen a... I've never analysed the guitar signal um, through an oscilloscope before, and um, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff sort of made sense as I was actually um, seeing it on the screen, and, and that's exactly why I bought this thing, was to, to get uh, a better understanding of um, actually what's going on, and for me personally, I'm a bit of a sort of visual learner, um, so actually to be able to see it on the screen, um, it sort of ties all that stuff that you read um, together and you know makes it clearer. It does for me anyway. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. It'd be really, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and um, more videos to come of um, uh, of the oscilloscope and guitar pedal related things as well. Thanks for watching.